Hello everyone, this is PKO Entertainment and we're back again and here now we have another video for you and just some movie reporting here with the recent announcement that both Disney and Marvel will be pushing back the release dates of their upcoming movies. Now of course this primarily concerns all of the superhero movies within the phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now we've seen these kind of changes happen before, particularly preceded by what happened with the pandemic but after reading some various reports and articles this new change has nothing to do with the pandemic or indeed the day and date streaming strategy that we've seen recently with Disney Plus concerning the likes of Black Widow. There's been no behind the scenes controversy or upheaval within either Disney or Marvel. This is much more of a re strategizing of their content. And to be honest, if you want to look at these change of dates, I think it's primarily to do with the fact that I think they've assessed the numbers, particularly of Shang-Chi, and perhaps some forecasting in terms of Eternals and they've probably realised it's probably best to shift the movies a year back later just to give them more chance to really utilise the amount of box office that they can gain when they are released theatrically. So we're going to go quickly over the various change in the dates of the various projects and it's just a quick list overall. So as we currently stand at the moment we know that Eternals is due to be released on November the 5th of this year and Spider-Man No Way Home is still due for release on December the 17th this year as well. So going ahead when we talk about the future projects, we look at first Doctor Strange The Multiverse of Madness, which was due to be released initially on March the 5th, 2022. That has now moved to May the 6th, 2002. We then look at Four Love and Thunder, which initially was moved to May 6th, 2022, and it's now shifted forward to July the 8th, 2022. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, originally stated for July the 8th, 2022, will now be moved to November the 11th, 2022. The third Guardians of the Galaxy movie is still slated for release on May the 5th, 2023. Ant-Man 3 Quantum Mania will be released on July the 28th, 2023. And the Marvels, including the likes of Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel and the Monica Rambeau version as well, was initially stated for November the 11th, 2022. That was the original date for Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. That has now been shifted forward to February the 17th, 2023. And as I mentioned at the start of this video, I wouldn't say this is any cause of concern for Marvel, particularly when we look at most of the films overall, the likes of Doctor Strange, The Multiverse of Madness, Four Love and Thunder, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Now, those four films are guaranteed box office successes in whatever stage of the year that you release them in. They've had previously good installments that were good box office performers at the box office. We look particularly at Doctor Strange. Everybody is super amped and excited because that will delve far more into the multiverse that will be introduced by the MCU when we see the likes of Spider-Man No Way Home. So there's no doubts about that film. In fact, I would actually deem that that would probably be the most successful out of all of the Phase 4 films. Four Love and Thunder will just feed off the same tone that we saw from Four Ragnarok, which was the most successful out of the four franchise, grossing over $850 million worldwide. Despite my own feelings about the film, it's been the one that's been the most well received out of all of the four films so again we have returning director Taika Waititi along with the likes of Chris Hemsworth coming back including Natalie Portman as well making a return as well as Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie as well and also with the inclusion of Christian Bell so they're going to go all sorts of crazy we're going to get all sorts of spectacle and outlandish shenanigans going on with that film so again there's no doubts about that Black Panther Wakanda Forever, of course, will feed off the massive success of the first film, which made over $1.3 billion at the box office. And I'm absolutely sure that when it comes to that overall film's release, Marvel will very much attach Chadwick Boseman, his late passing and his overall legacy to that film. And I just think people in general feel almost obliged to watch that film just in order to pay respect to Chadwick overall. So again, there's no worries about Black Panther. Would it still make a billion? I think we'll get close again making a lot of assumptions depending on how well the theatrical climate is going ahead into 2023 and obviously we've got a lot of question marks as to who will exactly will take the Black Panther mantle from Chadwick Boseman's T'Challa there's speculation that it will be Shuri but we don't know yet in the future so 
There's a lot of speculation, but again, I've got no doubts in terms of the box office for Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Same as Guardians of the Galaxy 3, both of the previous two installments were massive box office successes. And this will just continue on the same tone. The Guardians of the Galaxy, as we all know, are very popular within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So no real concerns there. We did have the recent news, of course, that actor Will Poulter has been cast as Adam Warlock, a famous character indeed from the more Marvel Cosmic Universe, in particularly the Infinite Gauntlet storyline as well. So he wasn't included in Marvel's own rendition in the likes of Infinity War and Endgame. But if you remember at the end scene of Guardians of the Galaxy 2, it was very much hinted that we will be seeing the creation of Adam Warlock. So he will be featured very much heavily in this third installment. So again, no worries in terms of Guardians of the Galaxy 3 whenever they release it overall. Same as Ant-Man, I would say. It's a bit of a weird title, Quantum Mania, but again, we're going to delve, I guess, into some remnants of the multiverse as well. The Quantum Realm, which is very prominent within the Ant-Man franchise. And there will also be an appearance from Kang the Conqueror. If you remember, he was from the Loki series as well. So it's all going to tie in together. So there'll be plenty of interest and intrigue within Ant-Man 3. So again, no particular worries on that front. The only project I would probably say where there's probably a bit of concern is perhaps the Marvels. Because primarily we all know the fallout from the Captain Marvel movie, despite the fact it made a billion dollars, it hasn't been one of the most well critically received of the Marvel movies overall. And again, you're dealing with all the fallout of Brie Larson. We all know what happened behind her and the controversy there. And the fact that it's being called the Marvels as opposed to Captain Marvel 2, I think it's very telling. I think the fact that Marvel has realised that the character hasn't crossed over with audiences as well as they would have hoped. So they're trying to hedge their bets in many ways by throwing in the likes of Miss Marvel, who we all know will get her own Disney Plus show, which I think is due for release now next year. I think it was slated for this year, but I think they've pushed it back to next year. Correct me if I'm wrong. And also we'll have the Captain Marvel Monica Rambeau, who we saw from One Division as well. So they're very much using other characters to try and prompt up and support Carol Danvers as well. So that's the one out of all of the projects within this announcement so far that I've probably got a little bit of doubt over in terms of how well it'll perform at the box office. But as I said before at the beginning of this video, I just think this is a very smart move from Marvel. Just shifting these movies back a year because whilst they will probably be successful anyway it's that choice well if we release them in the next year or two they may make 70 percent of what they would normally make if they were released in a non-pandemic climate why release the film and end up making 600 million when you could wait a year and make closer to a billion so it makes complete sense what they're doing people have been speculating that the pushing back of the Marvel films will clear a lot of space for a lot of DC content the likes of the Batman and Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom of course this is DC's time to shine I wouldn't be celebrating that as well because DC as well they're never on any kind of sure footing or foundation you don't know what's going to happen with all of the movies they're releasing again people may over speculate the fact that this is maybe a crisis for Marvel I don't think that's the case they're just being very smart and just making sure that when these movies are released that they can make the biggest amount of money as possible at the box office and I think that's a good step going ahead for the Marvel phase four and beyond that as well the only other news within this announcement was Indiana Jones 5 and that will now be pushed to 2023 we all know they did recently start filming the projects they had to stop because Harrison Ford injured his shoulder he's recording and I believe they're carrying on filming now so again they're pushing back to 2023 Again, it's not really too much to be said about that. The only problem concern being that Harrison Ford is still healthy enough to carry on and finish production overall. I've done a video previously in terms of the casting of Indiana Jones, and you can check that out within my channel as well. But there's not really too much to say about that either. So really, that's it really in terms of the overall lists and changes. In terms of the recent Marvel upcoming movies... Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think this is primary cause for concern? Or do you think this is a good decision by Marvel? They're being very smart. And when we come to 2023, do you think this decision will be validated if many of the movies get close to that billion dollar mark or beyond that in the future? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please also hit and like the subscription and notification buttons so I can provide you with more high quality content like this in the future. But that's it for now. Take care of yourselves. Stay at safe distances and I will see you very, very soon.